This is Twol Slang. It used to be a school. During the Khmer Rouge regime, it became known as S21, Security Office 21, where some 16,000 people were brought to be tortured, interrogated, and then taken away for killing. Only a handful, it's thought as many as a dozen, survived. It's now become a genocide museum, charting the terrible history of those times, and it's also become a crime scene, full of evidence in the first case to come before the UN-backed Khmer Rouge Tribunal, the case of the former director of this facility, Kangurk Irv, better known by his Khmer Rouge alias, Comrade Doik. Inside one of the cells you get some idea at least of what life must have been like for the inmates of this place. This, believe it or not, is referred to as a VIP cell, uh, reserved for senior people suspected of treachery. Uh, the inmate would have been tied, shackled to this iron bed, and repeatedly tortured until he was taken away for execution at one of the killing fields, often with a blunt instrument to save on bullets. And what happened here is simply a microcosm of what went on throughout this country it was as, as it was brutalized by the ultra-communist Khmer Rouge regime as they tried to take it back to an agrarian, moneyless society, a year zero, during which time up to 1.7 million people died as neighbors were encouraged to kill neighbors. This trial process is designed some 30 years on to bring some sort of resolution for Cambodia to all of that and to bring a handful of key decision makers to justice. The reason that Doig's case was heard first was in part for its relative lack of complexity. There's so much evidence on offer in this place of what went on, and also his own admission of guilt. He said he was solely and individually responsible for some 12,380 deaths. A swift conviction, it was thought, would bring validity to this process, especially where it's most needed in the eyes of the Cambodian people. But it's proved anything but simple. The investigating judges complained of delays, saying it should never have taken 15 months to get to this point. The government's been accused of political interference interference, uncomfortable as it is with the prospect of other people, people currently within its own ranks, being investigated. And Doig's own actions have been contradictory as well. Initially, his defense strategy was to be contrite and remorseful, hoping for a lenient sentence. And then on the very last day of the hearing, he switched that, saying he wanted acquittal and release. The verdict on Monday won't just be a judgment on Doik and his actions, it'll also be in part a judgment on the entire process as the court prepares its second case, a much more complex one, of four more senior Khmer Rouge leaders, all elderly, all in failing health. Harry Fawcett, Al Jazeera, Phnom Penh.